Okay, so let's talk debugging. So your issue is you're hitting your button and your cart's not starting and you don't know what to do. One of the first steps is obviously let's check your remotes. If you hit the button and you see blue lights flashing, that's a good sign that your remote battery is not dead. Some people report seeing a red light, which means your battery is low or possibly dead. Other thing to do is keep in mind of the, the location of the box and its antenna. So the box is tucked in under here. So keeping your key fob close, you know, in the center console here is a really good spot where it's very close to the receiver or your cup holder. Sometimes people even report putting it in this cup holder over here is too far or there's maybe electrical interference with the other thing. So one thing to do is just try to make sure that your key fob is close to this general area here while you push the start button. So if the easy things don't work, the next thing you're gonna need is a little multimeter. If you don't have a multimeter, this one's $13 on Amazon, super cheap, nothing special. You're gonna need one when working on electrical projects. So for the next two things we're gonna try to figure out, you're gonna need one of these. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is starting to work our way back is we're gonna wanna make sure that pin one is actually getting 48 to 53 volts, something like that. Is the module even getting power? So on our voltmeter, we're just gonna go to the volt side. I'm gonna put that there on the 200 scale. Red is in the volt side and the black is in the ground. I'm gonna unplug the main harness. And in this harness, we are going to do the black to the black wire and red to the orange wire. That's what I'm gonna do here. You're gonna be careful not to spark it. Touch the two together. And what you'll see here is I have 53 volts going uh, out of that orange wire. So that's a good sign. I have direct battery power going into the back of my ignition box. So now that we know our ignition box is getting a proper voltage uh, and that that is working, the next thing we want to make sure is that our switch is actually switching. It's passing that voltage on and back to the box. To do something like that, we're going to switch our uh, multimeter to this little icon here, and that is the continuity icon. And what that does is when I touch these two together, it beeps. So that way we know that uh, the contacts are closing when we hit the button. Okay, so to make sure our button uh, does its job and passes on the voltage, what you're gonna do is go to the back of its lead and you're going to put your ground wire into the back side of the connector, just up against the black wire. So we're gonna do that ground and we're gonna wanna test that uh, if the yellow wire passes on the voltage while we hit the button. So I'm just gonna add my other probe in to the yellow wire. Okay, so with my multimeter in continuity mode, I have my black probe going into the black wire of the button and the red probe going into the yellow wire of the button. When I hit the button, my multimeter should make a sound. Okay. So that's a good sign. That means that our button is passing on the voltage and it should be reaching the ignition box. If that's not happening for you, potentially your button got wet, it's broken, and the button is no longer working, and that is likely the issue. So at this point, if it's still not working for you, you've put your keys right beside, you've hit the start button, and it is still not starting. You know the ignition box is getting 48 volts. You know your button uh, is buttoning, and it's sending the signal to it. Sadly, there's no LED or any type of light on the ignition box that would let us know that it's even sending out that broadcast uh, looking for a key acknowledgement. The only way to actually see that would be to use a USB device like this and an antenna to actually listen for the radio frequencies. This goes a bit above and beyond what the average mechanic is likely able to do. So at this point in time, you really kind of have to rule out the ignition module maybe having some issues. And a lot of them uh, come with a set of keys. So that box for $220 uh, would plug in here and would come with two new sets of keys and also a new button. So replacing this is probably the only way to go if you've tried all of these steps and haven't been able to make it work. Sadly, after trying those steps, there's really not much else you can do to try to debug this mystery black box. Um, the good thing is it does seem like one of the companies sells a generic compatible one on Amazon. It's $222 and it comes with two keys, the button and the wireless ignition. So that could be a reasonable route to go. It looks like it has two day shipping, uh, and so something like that, if you were to order it and put it in, 
it should solve some of the missing gremlins. But if you guys have any other ideas about these things and have worked with them before, let me know. But uh, if you're in an immediate urgency and looking for a way to bypass the uh, wireless ignition box, check out my other video, which goes into the depth on how these things actually work. And there is a way to hotwire it and get you back on the road. Cheers.